Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is the eighth part of my electronic series, which you can find on my website at xrobots.co.uk slash electronics, although it is the fourth YouTube video. So if you have a look there for the complete series, there's also a playlist in my YouTube channel. I also now have forums on my website where you can discuss electronics, mechanics, robotics, fabrication, prop building, and other things. So have a look at xrobots.co.uk slash forum. So this video is entitled Short Circuits, Theory and Practice. So let me get some paper and I'll draw you a diagram. So let's imagine a circuit which has a 5 volt battery and it has a bulb down here. And maybe that bulb is 100 ohms in resistance which means the current flowing through the bulb is going to be 50 milliamps. So that's all very well and good, a bit like a flashlight or a torch. But what happens if we put a direct short circuit in? So obviously the circuit won't work, but why is that? So when I was at school many years ago, the explanation that was offered was that the electricity takes the shortest route and that's why the circuit doesn't work. But let's just have a look. So we've got five volts between these two points. So that's fine. And we've got five volts between these two points. So that's fine. So we've still got five volts across the bulb. So why is it that the bulb doesn't light? So um, obviously if we short out a bulb um, uh, with a battery, then it doesn't work. But typically the reason for that is that we're drawing such a large current through here, perhaps the resistance is 0 0.01 ohms, which means that five volts, ohms law says, we're drawing 500 amps through this part of the circuit. So most batteries, because they're something like this, can't provide 500 amps. So the potential difference across them measured in volts drops to practically nothing. And I can demonstrate that right now. So I've got four AA cells here. They're actually rechargeables that are 1.2 volts each, which makes 4.8 volts because they're all in series. Um, I've got my Terminator skull, I actually made this out of items which um, all from the pound shop or the dollar store if you're in the US. There's an article on my website and a video on my channel about how I made that if you want to have a look. So I'm actually measuring the potential difference across the battery while this is powering the LEDs in the eyes, which as you can see is slightly higher than 4.8 volts, it's 5 volts. So basically what I'm going to do is go and short out the battery pack and we'll see what happens. So these are the two wires I've got here. Let's just put those together. So we'll see the bulb goes out, or well, the LEDs go out, but as you can see, the meter is now measuring 0.18 or 0.20, uh, 0.2 volts, in fact. That's flattened the battery a bit, so now it's saying 4.8. So obviously that's a short circuit or a shorter circuit. But as I said, when we're looking at the diagram, the reason, in fact, for the, for the LEDs going out is that the battery cannot maintain that voltage while we're drawing such a large current in the short circuit. So coming back to the diagram, what we've demonstrated is, in fact, when we put a short circuit in and we draw massive current through this piece of wire, basically the, the battery can't maintain its potential difference measured in volts. So we haven't got 5 volts anymore. We've got 0.2 volts. And that's basically why the circuit doesn't work. So obviously we don't have 5 volts anywhere. We've only got 0.2 volts across the bulb and that's not enough to make it light. So that basically gives us the appearance that the circuit doesn't work. But let's just say we've got a really big power supply. So when I was younger, a friend of mine had a power supply from a flight simulator, which basically it was rated at 5 volts and it could provide a current of 500 amps because flight simulators draw a lot of current. So in that case, the circuit should still work fine because we can provide 500 amps here and the power supply can provide 500 amps at 5 volts. So drawing 500 amps, it can still maintain 5 volts here and therefore there's still 5 volts across the bulb and the circuit still works. Um, and if we measured the current in the circuit, we'd find there's 500 amps across here and there's 50 milliamps here. So provided this cable doesn't burn out, obviously the cable has to be capable of carrying 500 amps um, and then we did actually have a cable that could carry 500 amps because it came from the flight simulator power supply and it powered the flight simulator. So basically the cable was fine. 
So if you set this circuit up with a 500 amp capable cable and a light bulb, you'll find that it all works fine. In fact, we'd be drawing 500.05 amps in total, which uh, would still be fine because the power supply is fairly hefty. I think the trip was something like 600 amps and you could spot weld with it. So um, no problems with that and, and the circuit would still work. But let's have a look at another bit of theory. What would happen if we actually did have zero ohms? So here's the five volt power supply. There's the bulb again. Just approximately sketch that out. And um, let's just say that we did actually put a zero ohm resistance in here. So basically we'd have a divide by zero error, which means that uh, current via Ohm's law is basically um, voltage divided by resistance. So in this case, our current would be five divided by zero. And if you try that on a calculator, you'll get an error um, or the answer's infinity. And that's because no matter how many zeros you add together, you can never get to five. So in theory, we would be drawing an infinite current. That's not it. That's my infinity sign, the best I can do on one side. Um, so we'd be drawing an infinite current and the power supply wouldn't be able to provide an infinite current because it's impossible. So therefore we wouldn't have five volts across the bulb anymore. So it'd be the same as when we shorted the battery out. However, to get an infinite current, uh, you need to have zero resistance. And I'm pretty sure the only way you can do that is by cooling the conductor to zero degrees Kelvin, um, which hasn't been achieved. And that's because I think in theory, it needs an infinite amount of power. But by virtue of the fact that you've got an infinite amount of power to cool the conductor to zero degrees Kelvin to get zero ohms resistance to draw an infinite current, you must have an infinite amount of power so you can have a power supply which can provide an infinite amount of power. So therefore you can still provide an infinite current and the circuit still works. And that's all I have for today. Goodbye.